Welcome back to the program. If you're just joining us, this is the big story right on KTN News and Studio. Still have Kisumu Deputy Governor Matthew Willey, Nandi Senator Samson Cherargay, CEO of Kenya Women Agenda, Catherine Mayo, National Chairperson of Third World Alliance, Miriru Waweru. Now, the entire handshake deal is political and so is the process guiding it. But President Uru Kinata wants politics detached from it, saying politics are derailing the vision of the deal. Let's listen in. It will be politics. You only highly Maisha. But please do not misinterpret politics with this deeper understanding. Politics will come and go. Kenya will remain. Let me begin the second part of this discussion with uh, Senator Samson Chirargay from Eldoret. Now, Senator, you've had what the president had just uh, talked about there on the need to separate politics uh, from the handshake. But there are political pundits out there who are saying that, you know, the handshake has shaken politicians who already have their eyes set on the, you know, 2022 presidential race. Uh, thank you, Yusuf. I, I agree with the president that uh, the main focus now should be on the Big Four agenda and uh, nothing else should distract. And I want to insist that uh, there was no crisis to warrant any information of task force. And if you remember, Raila Odinga's options were off. That is why he decided to go for Anshe. So that one notwithstanding is that uh, it is not in any way derailing because it has come out in light that uh, the former prime minister will running for presidency in 2022. So that is uh, that is why now the handshake is being politicized. If 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 Raila Odinga had maintained that he is only in handshake, but we have realized that this handshake he wants to use it so to to pacify or to gain inroads to jubilee strongholds, and that one laying ground for 2022 succession politics. And, and are you and having therefore, any, I think and are you also having reservations? The, the, the issue. And are you having reservations with regards to the task force based on the same 2022 politics? Of course, of course, uh, what we are saying, Yusuf, I want to agree to some of the panelists that what the task force will do is duplication of roles that all, what we should be looking as a country is to strengthen the institutions that we have in place, like judiciary, like the DPP, like the DCI, like the NCIC, and many other multi agencies that will fight corruption, that will bring cohesiveness and equal opportunities that those a country. So I still have reservations because this is one of the way of being used by some individuals who want to politicize and shape for their own benefit for 2022 succession politics. And that is the reservation that I myself have always had against this task force and even the intentions, the real intentions of the handshake. DG uh, O'Willy, you've had Senator's point of view there. E, are there individuals who are trying to position themselves, you know, take vantage positions before to the 2022 uh, election through the current task force? Yusuf, I was making a point when I last spoke, and I was talking about the opportunities that we've had as a country to make it right. Mm -hmm. The first opportunity was, of course, at independence. We had the second opportunity during the uh, NAC administration. That's the NAC dream. Now, this third opportunity, I can tell you, holds so much for our country, Kenya. And let me just go now to the Building Bridges Initiative and what my very good friend, the Senator of uh, Nandi, okay, and his opinion. You know, this country has always risen to the occasion when there is need. I mean, we have seen that during the IPPG. We saw that during the Grand Coalition government. At any point in time when there is need to correct, um, you know, and, and to get back to a path, Kenyans have always risen to the occasion. And so, even for the BBI initiative, if there is any legislation that may need to be passed, I think our uh, parliament is, um, a, you know, a, a, a capable you know, of rising to the occasion and passing the same. But allow me to say uh, this, that just the mere fact that there was a golden handshake and the fact that Kenyans are now thinking in one direction has enabled us to do so many things. I mean, the war on corruption and impunity was not, I mean, you couldn't imagine that, you know, before the handshake. And so there's so much already that we can see as benefits of the handshake that uh, I would like for my very good friend, you know, I mean, to, to really 
you know, support, mm -hmm. if you ask me. Yeah. Let me, let me get you aware from the third world lands once again. This is, uh, of course, an outfit that uh, has really criticized heavily the Building Bridges Task Force. And one of the criticism is from the third world lands that the task force is going to usurp on, you know, independent institutions. You gave out the example of EACC, for example, in the DPP's office. And I'm sure the critics out there will tell you that despite these institutions being in place, the country is still losing billions. Is it 600 billion shillings every year through corruption? We're to see a single conviction. Don't you think the task force might just be, you know, the solution to this? Um, uh, you see, mm -hmm. as a country, we must learn to build institutions. Uh, Third Way Alliance believes in strong institutions and uh, not ad hoc measures. Uh, one of the reasons we have said that uh, the task force is actually usurping laws of um, existing constitutional commissions, the, we have several reasons. For one, what is building bridges? Building bridges is cohesion. Cohesion is at a national cohesion and integration commission. If we believe that the commission does not have enough teeth, mm -hmm. why can't we use the registration in parliament to improve its functions? which are actually also stipulated in the Constitution. Number two, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. They are <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the Building Bridges Commission has been mandated also to, uh, to deal with issues about cor uh, corrup corruption. Uh, in third ways, uh, Alliance uh, uh, definition of corruption, there is also what we call theft of public money. That money that you say that is, uh, we get, uh, gets lost about a third of the whole budget every year. This means that if EACC, the DCI, were to do their work clearly, and that is what we need. We need maybe even uh, to improve our laws so that we increase monitoring of what they, are, what they actually do so that we can actually get results. If the institutions that are, are founded uh, and are, are constitutional are not uh, really functioning to give us results, why do we think that a body that has been created uh, through uh, actually what we, we have actually uh, uh, referred to in, the, in our statement as a void contract. Mm -hmm. uh, we, how do you think it will come up with the solutions? Who will, effect, who, who will implement the findings of that commission? There is no mechanism. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is this, that the, the, the task force would have been better if it had uh, legal foundations. It is built on quicksand and uh, I, I would like to, re, to, to draw the attention of the members of the public like, uh, on, on, on this issue of, uh, they have also raised the issue of divisive politics, divisive uh, ethnicized politics. If we go back, we have reports from the Kennedy Kiriku uh, Committee, Select Committee from Parliament in 1992. We have the Akiumi Commission of uh, 1998. We have the CPEV report. Mm -hmm. We have the Krigra report. We have the TJRC report. All those reports are gathering dust. They have not been implemented. What is that that will make this, the findings of this commission to be implemented? It is actually undermining the findings of the previous commissions. Don't you think those are some of the answers, perhaps the task force? No, we don't to... need a task force to do that. The president has the mandate to start implementing the findings of all those other, uh, other commissions without spending any other public money on a, a, new, commission, a, a new task force. Mm -hmm. And, uh, for example, uh, uh, also to address the issue of uh, this commission offending Article 201 of the Constitution. The Article 201 of the Constitution clearly states that public money must be spent prudently and for public purpose. One, this commission is founded on an agreement between the President of Kenya and another individual. Kenya has 46 city, million, over 46 million citizens. If another Kenyan makes a similar a similar agreement with the president, will it be implemented using public funds? So what we are saying is this. Mm -hmm. the, we, must, we must not say this is a very dangerous president mm -hmm. that we can use public money to implement individual shared objectives. Yes, I'm sure, I'm sure there are maybe people who will differ with so, you there. So and I can see Senator Chiragay uh, wants to really have bring to in... With us, yes, but what I, th I, think, I think the Senator wants to get into the discussion. But let me give Catherine a chance to react to the national uh, chairperson of the Third World Alliance point of view. Catherine is saying that the task force is built on quicksand. It's you something on you know the duties of these other independent institutions what do you have to say about that whether quicksand or not mm -hmm. kenyans needed no war and at the moment the handshake stopped the war we're not yet talking of peace because we still have so many pending unfinished business but for now 
anybody who's not sharing similar lab interest in the bridging, the, 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 the BBI uh, idea, mm -hmm. I think is dialing stormy waters for trouble. You cannot be thinking of 2022 yes. if you're not building a conducive environment for palatable, you know, food for every Kenyan. Mm -hmm. You have to build a, a conducive environment even for you to be there mm -hmm. for 2022. You can, I think people should learn to live day by day. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans are, are desperate for just stability. We mm -hmm. have so many unfinished business, the two-third gender rule, the parliament. So peace, so peace is paramount, right, Catherine? Peace is paramount. Uh -huh. And without let, peace, let you cannot Senator, do anything. Yes, let me engage Senator Chenarge there. I think he has a burning issue. Senator, as much as you're going to make a comment, do you think this, at least, you can, do you think there's a need to give this, you know, uh, this task for some time at least for them to you know complete their report and then perhaps bring in the criticism i, I agree there are so many reports uh, uh, ibrahim that has been done in this country based on many things like dungula reports kiluki reports the po the post selection work report post selection violence i want to agree with uh, my brother from tatwe lands that we don't need any any task force to do some of these things what we need to do is add more money to dpp allocate more resources to dci disband the ESCC, ensure that we put in place uh, the judiciary are crying fall because we have cut down the, the money that is needed so that the, the cases are expedited because we have said there are no conviction we need to give more money to judiciary so that some of these high profile cases that involve graft in this country but be prosecuted so therefore we don't need any other task force com committee or commission to be formed to look some of this one issue he said that the country was going to war it was not going to war the president had been validly uhuru kenyatta has been validly elected and i'm shocked in fact raila odinga the other during the weekend he said uh, jubilee did not win so it means he himself needs needs first cohesion to come to reality that the, the election did happen, the Supreme Court did validate the, the, the winning, there was an open uh, inauguration swearing in of, this, of the President Uhuru Kenyatta, and therefore, Ibrahim, I need as a country, we need to remain focused. Our main focus, and, and, and I say this with a lot of conviction, that now we have lost the main focus of focusing on the Big Four agenda and concentrating on some of them issues that some of the institutions can be done. You, mm -hmm. you go to media nowadays, you read newspapers, you, you go to social places, the main focus of the Big Four agenda, the legacy of the president and the springboard of our candidate in 2022 has been relocated somewhere and yet we are now focusing on some of the issues like the handshake that it happened in 2007-2008 and it has now happened because uh, the, 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 NASA, the NASA leader did not have any options. The options were over. He realized Canaan was in the steps of Arambe and therefore let I me, think yes, let me let me Let me hear DG or Willis Yes, let me, let me hear DJ's point of view on this. Uh, Deputy Governor, can you perhaps react to what the Senator has, has raised there? Yusuf, first of all, uh, again, I take great exception to the view of the Third Way Alliance that this handshake was between the president and an individual. I mean, mm -hmm. that is the height of, you know, disrespect. Uh, for leaders that we have in this country, given the contribution that they have, uh, you know, um, uh, given to the country, Kenya. But having said that, I mean, um, as a country, we have issues that affect us that we must address today, and for which the handshake comes in handy. I mean, we have runaway corruption in this country. Now we can see institutions working round the clock to fix it. We have a very disunited country, and as, in, as far as we look at ourselves, we are very tribal. Mm -hmm. Now, that is being fixed now as a result of the handshake. I mean, you'd be happy to know that Moses Kuria came to Kisumu and was given a hero's welcome. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the handshake already broken all the bridges. Yes that were there and so now we look at our, at each other you know as brother and and sister well, well said dg let me let me give uh, the national chairperson of the third World alliance the last word here and uh we will look at your statement once again you said that this is a personal agreement between the president of kenya and an individual this is something that dg has also talked about really we all know that last year's election was between the two main protagonists president urkinata and raila odinga don't you think it's a bit wrong to refer to him just an, as an individual 
No, you see, every human being is an individual. And uh, there's nothing wrong with referring to an individual as such. Because when you look at the context on which we wrote, uh, the, um, the, the, which informed us to write uh, to Joseph Kinyua today, is that uh, the president is uh, the, the president Uhuru is the legitimately elected president of this country. I don't know, uh, we, we are not aware of the portfolio that uh, Raida Odinga holds except running, uh, uh, being a party leader maybe for ODM now. And uh, uh, w w without going back to the politics of last year, uh, we, we, we think that we had asked, uh, and, and it is in public domain, we had asked when mm -hmm. the hardship happened that there must, uh, for any reconciliation to happen, we have to have genuine, genuine apologies for what people did uh, during the elections and after. We specifically asked for genuine apologies for, from, the, for the, from the readers, which has not been forthcoming. But uh, the way we are, we are now is that we cannot allow any other individual mm -hmm. to, to be making agreements with the sitting yes. president. Yes. And then it is implemented mm -hmm. using public funds. For example, mm -hmm. now, the government is, uh, is, uh, intends to implement section uh, B of... Uh, of uh, Schedule 1 of VAT yes. Act. Yes, well, 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 I think I have to, to raise cut more money. Short. I, are, I think I have to cut you short. More money we are on a out of time. Unfortunately, we are out of time. I think this is a conversation that needs more time. Many thanks for your input. There is the National Chairperson of the Third World Alliance, uh, Meriru Aweru, and then we also had the CEO of Kenya Women Agenda, Catherine Omanyo, Samson Terarigay, Nandi, Senator, who joined us all the way from Eldoret, as well as Kisumu Deputy Governor, uh, Dr. Matthew Owili. Many thanks all of you for your input, and that brings us to the end of the program tonight. Many thanks for watching. My name is Yusuf Ibrahim. Up next is KTM Prime. Bye-bye for now.